Hello, everyone. My name is Squee, and welcome to episode two of the Curse of the Crimson Throne podcast. First things first, I apologize for this being a week late. Um, my intent is to release an episode every Sunday. If you may have noticed, this is the second Sunday since uh, an episode has been released. Um, the problems for that was technical difficulties. Um, one of our players, Cairo, unfortunately, my sister's audio was corrupted. The the audio was like four gigabytes and 11 minutes long, which obviously not quite a session length. Um, we had a backup. However, uh, the backup itself wasn't the best quality. And I have spent the past two weeks um, meticulously editing this to get it as good a quality as possible. And I stay as possible because it's still not perfect. Um, there's a small echo whenever my sister speaks. Um, Plus, some of the audio balance isn't the perfect. I, I just ask you all to bear with us for the next two episodes, which is our first session. Um, it gets much better after that, I promise you. All the players kind of looked at uh, their audio and they're like, I want to improve this, which is great. I don't ever push my players to improve their audio. They wanted to do it on their own, which is fantastic uh, for you and for me and for everyone. Um, so bear with us for the next two episodes. It's definitely not horrible at all, but uh, we go through a few growing pains, uh, and it gets enormously better, uh, starting with episode four. But that's a few weeks away. Uh, we have uh, episode two this week. I promise you we should be back on track. In fact, I may release episode three a little early, depending on how fast to get the editing done, because you guys have been very patient. Uh, for those of you listening to this on Podbean, welcome and thank you. And, uh, Wow, it's great to see you guys. Uh, we've had a great response and a few comments, and we've read them, and we love them. Um, for those of you watching this on YouTube, hello, welcome back again. Uh, I hope you guys are um, enjoying it. By all means, leave comment and feedbacks. Uh, this video is one of the most watched videos on our CyLP channel, which makes us feel all warm and fuzzy inside uh, with almost like a hundred comments, which is fantastic. So please keep it up. Keep up the interaction. This is why we like to upload this for you guys to uh, to watch it and to enjoy it. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much longer. We're going to kick it off. This is the start of our first actual session. Remember, last episode was everyone's backstory, and now we begin the story proper. Um, so, without any further ado, the episode two of The Curse of the Crimson Throne. Alright everyone, welcome to session one. Let's just jump right in. Um, in all of our solo sessions together, every single one of them ended where you were waking up basically wherever your individual characters spend the night to find a, um, a horror card, uh, which is like a... Um, out of character, it's like a tarot card deck. It's very popular in Corvosa. They are um, commonly... Use like getting a horror card reading is a fairly popular thing in Corvosa. Most of the time, it's just uh, fortune tellers and 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 people that uh, it's not exactly real. But there are a few people in Corvosa that actually have magical ability with it, can actually have foresight. Um, so horror decks are very popular. You would have heard of them. You would know them. You would know what they are. Um, all of you received them, and. Um, Give me a second. Um, and each of you received a, uh, on the back of each horror card, um, I'm going to just tell you guys what, what who got what horror card, because you actually got specific ones. Um, Otto, you got the Forge. That was the horror card you got. Um, Arlen, give me a second. You got the hidden truth <laughs> oh boy what does that mean yeah interesting isn't it um i love the dude on the front of that <laughs> uh miri or miri you got the uprising 
Oh my. Okay. And Arlen. Um, Arlen already got hers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Amelia. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, Amelia, you got the uprising, and Weary, you got the owl. Of course I did. <laughs> Racist. <laughs> Tarot cards are not, they don't choose on race. They choose on the future. <laughs> or past or present, actually. Um, so you all each just found one of these cards and you found it somewhere uh, in your everyday things. Uh, for example, Otto, um, do you still carry around like your blacksmithing tools with you on a day-to-day -day basis? Do you still have blacksmithing tools? Uh, I feel like they would have been left with the business. Okay. Uh, you would find this on your person in your belongings of some import. Uh, for example, Arlen, mm -hmm. um, you found, uh, you, you probably fell asleep making one of your weird science creations. You found this card sitting atop your most recent creation. Well, that's a little weird. Mm. Um, Amelia, you, um, you uh, found this just uh, in one of your pockets. And, uh, Miri, you found this on the ruined countertop where you used to serve food. Okay. And, um, on each of your cards, on the back of it, is a message, um, that I'm going to show you all now in your hands outs. Um, right here. Would someone like to read that out? I know what Gideon has done to you. He has wronged me as well. I know where he dwells, yet cannot strike at him. Come to my home at 3 Lancet Street at sunset. Others like you will be there. Gadrian must face his fate, and justice must be done. That is the message, the identical message, on the back of every horror card that you guys got. Um, now... Three Lancet Street. Everyone roll me a knowledge local. And remember, all of you have that as a class skill. So if it's not marked on your character sheet, you all grew up here uh, or have spent many years here. So you all have some knowledge of local. So would that be a class skill? Yes. So if you have no ranks in it, you still add uh, plus three and then your... Um, Whatever modifier is associated with it, I forget at the moment. Oh, I thought you only got the plus three once you added the first point. No, well, yes, that's true. Thank you for actually pointing that out. Um, oh, wow. That's oh, Arlen. <laughs> okay. I don't know anything. You're just too sheltered for that. Yeah, so um, Otto and Arlen. Uh, hey, where, me where's part. Amelia? Give me a sec. Okay, sure, sure. I'll just go. So, Otto and Arlen, um, you don't immediately know where Lancet Street is, uh, and you end up having to spend uh, about uh, four hours <laughs> asking around or researching where Lancet Street is, asking people, get, getting directions. Yeah. Um, Arlen, Arlen, you ended up actually going... Uh, um, like you took a, a a winding path, you ended up going <laughs> this way and up here, <laughs> and then started coming down like this as people were just giving you bad directions and things like that. Um, I needed to get a break from the lab. I needed to get some exercise. But uh, Miri and Amelia, you're familiar enough. You know what um, where Lancet Street is. You know that it is in uh, Midpoint, the uh, section of town. Um, or, yeah, Midland. Sorry, the Midland section of town, which is uh, basically... Let me just draw this out for you real quick. It is basically this part of town. Um, can you all see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you uh, either through your searching or just through your local knowledge you're very able to find um, the street the house and the actual house is a very small house by the side of the road right there you might have to zoom in a bit to see that 
but it's this little house right here. And um, you, you, you all find these in the morning, so it's gonna be <laughs> at least noon before uh, Arlen and Otto can certainly find it. Um, the others of you, of course, um, well, it tells you to be there at sunset, so you have the, basically you have plenty of time to do your searching and asking. Uh, so I'm going to ask the players first of all. Do you all intend on following this note? Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Do you all intend on showing up at sunset, before sunset, after sunset? What I intend to do, because you know what, a letter appearing in my stuff in my house is like a little weird, um, is I intend to be on that street and I want to watch that house. But I don't necessarily want to just show up and kick the door down. I want to see who else has showed up, what the activity of the house is like, if I recognize anybody. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. pretty much exactly what I was going to say, is just lurk around until the time. Okay. So you all you, you both show up somewhere earlier in the day and then just kind of monitor the house. Um, I get, I'm really tired by the time I get there, and I need something to drink, so I'm just going to... Go right on in. Go right on in. Okay, uh, do me a quick favor. Um, can both of you, uh, Otto and uh, um, Miri, uh, who are both stalking the house, um, can you roll me stealth checks, please? Sixteen. Okay. Okay, and then can you also roll me perception checks, please? Oh man, I'm having pockets perception. So uh, and so Otto got sixteen, Murray got thirteen. I'm sorry, I got to remember to start calling these out. Oh, um, nice. You know, for the people listening at home. Uh, so Otto got a fourteen perception, Murray got a twenty perception. <laughs> so uh, after about an hour. Otto, you notice that there's this, uh, there's a Kadal, uh, which is a, an unusual race in this town. Uh, there's maybe a few hundred in all of Corvosa. They're, they're, they tend to be loners, and they it's tend to be uh, an unusual sight to see it. There's a Kadal hanging about this area, watching that house. And, uh, Miri, you also notice there's a human hanging around <laughs> watching that house. Because neither of you succeeded your opposed checks. Or you did, conversely, succeed your opposed checks. Mm, I think I'd keep watching to see what, what, uh, this, sorry, what was it, a Kadal? Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. I, I mean, that would be suspicious, right? Well, yeah, I, I mean, yes. It's suspicious for someone to just stand around a house. Yeah. Now... Do I see, or no, I guess um, Arlen would have gone, It was it Arlen that ran? Yes. Arlen just walked right in. Would she have gone in before I even got there? Because I, No, no, you were also delayed, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'd have seen her go in too, right? Yes, correct. I'd wait until sunset. Okay. Okay. Uh, Amelia, what's your plan? Um... Honestly, I see this as being, like, one of the days she has to attend work. And so mm-hmm. she would, like, run off to work, get things done, and then, like, run as quickly as possible to the house. Like, just barely getting there at sunset. Just like, I know where it is. It'll be fine. And then, crap, 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 crap. Got it. All right. So at sunset... Um, we'll say probably Arlen gets there first and then, um, and then Amelia. And would you go straight into the house? Um, after a moment of kind of like glancing around, uh, she would, uh, kind of hesitantly enter the house after knocking. Okay. So Arlen, you go in first. Um, the interior of this 
small, uh, admittedly very humble home, consist of uh, one cozy chamber filled with uh, a fragrant haze of flowers and um, a strong spice, um, not like a cooking spice, more of a scent, um, like a uh, incense. The aroma actually comes from several sticks of incense that are smoldering in wall-mounted burners. Uh, they look like butterfly-winged elves, and the smoke gives the room a, a kind of a dreamy feel, um, kind of a little surreal. Uh, the walls are draped with um, brocaded uh, tapestries, uh, one that shows a black skulled beast juggling human hearts, and another that shows a, a pair of angels dancing atop a snow-blasted mountain. Uh, there is one more tapestry uh, on the far wall. It depicts a tall, hooded figure shrouded in mist and holding a flaming sword with one skeletal hand. Uh, the floor has several brightly colored rugs on it, but the Really, the only furniture in the room to speak of is a wooden table uh, covered with a bright red throw cloth and uh, several elegant, uh, if not simple, uh, tall-backed chairs. Uh, in fact, you see four of them. Uh, I'm sorry, five of them. Five chairs sitting around the table. Uh, and a basket covered by a blue cloth that sits underneath the table. You also notice that there is a note on top of the basket of, uh, covered by the blue cloth. What would you like to do? Um, I would be nosy, and I'd like to see what the note said. Okay. Uh, this is what the note says. So it's a well, yeah, yeah. If I if, if I if I give you guys a handout, um, could one of you guys read it so that you know I can rest? <laughs> so that people don't coming. hear just me. I had to step out for a bit, but shall return shortly. Please, have a seat while you wait. The basket under the table contains bread and drink for you. Hmm. So, Arlen just kind of uh, decides to have a sit, uh, take a rest, because she's been walking for a while. Mm -hmm. Um but is a little hesitant and suspicious to eat food and drinks that are in somebody else's house. Got it. Um, do you, like, remove it from the table and put it on the table, or do you leave it under the table? No, I just leave it under the table. I just picked up the note, okay. read it, and then put the note back. All right. Uh, so, Amelia, this would be about the time you come in. Uh, the same description applies. The the dreamy sensation from the incense on the walls, the tapestries, the one table with five chairs in which you see a, um, well, I'll kind of let you describe yourself, but a half-elf sitting in the chair. And Arlen, would you like to give yourself a kind of a description? Uh, I don't know, a half-elf with um, very striking green eyes. Um... And I'm. Hmm. What what type of what season is it? Uh, at the moment it's uh, fall. Um, it's actually the month of in um in Cordosa or uh, Corvosa. Sorry. Um, it is the month of uh, Lamashin, which is in October, or what you would think of as October. Okay, so I'm sure I would have uh my jacket, my big leather jacket on from because i came from the lab and that's just what i wear to keep warm uh, i don't know what else um what's your hair short um uh, short hair i know that oh uh well like chin length kind of scraggly mm -hmm. uh uneven like maybe i got it i uh, had to cut it shorter because of some sort of accident it's just grown out kind of crazy all right. And um, one thing to note as well, Amelia, that the eyes, when she says striking green eyes, like they are almost glowing. Like they aren't literally, but they give that sensation. They are that bright of a green. Um, and Arlen, you see come through the door uh, another half elf. Um, Alora, would you like to give yourself a brief description? Um, 
Amelia is kind of a medium height, very slender woman with um, uh, heterochromia. Uh, one eye is a very pale gray and the other is hazel. Um, she has incredibly long, um, uh, sort of a dusty blonde hair, and she's just kind of got very plain, uh, work clothes and, a uh, cloak on, and <laughs> she looks incredibly nervous. Um, another thing to note that despite having incredibly plain clothes, she has very decorative um, uh, makeup and paint along the bottom of her jaw and uh, down her neck. Uh, Arlen would look at uh, Amelia and say, you know, nice, nice paint. Oh, oh, um, thank you. Um, were, were you, and she'll hold up the uh, tarot card that She's had clutched in her hand this entire time. Yes, I have one of those two um, somewhere. I, I'm not sure where I put it. So Arlen's kind of like searching all of her pockets and everything else. And then after going through like 10, 15 pockets, finds it and holds out the little uh, hidden truth card. Oh, oh, I, I, I meant... Uh... Well, what I meant to ask was if, if you you had um, sent this, but clearly you didn't. Sorry. Nope. I, Arlen's just casual and like, no, I didn't send it, but uh, I'm assuming the person who did send it will be here soon. They left a note saying that they uh, had to step out, but they will be right back. Um, there's a it's under the table if you'd like to read it. There's also a basket with bread and drinks if you care to take your chances. Um, Amelia kind of like glances at the table and hesitates for a moment and then uh, shakes her head and says, no, no, I'm, I'm fine. Darn it. Amelia's like just thirsty and wants to have somebody else try it first, but she just isn't going to do be the first person. <laughs> so <laughs> she looked hopeful for a minute, but then sat down back quietly in her seat, a little dejected. Um, after a few moments of just sort of standing in the closed doorway, fiddling with her thumbs, uh, Amelia would come join you at the table on the opposite side of where you sit. Uh, as you get closer, uh, as Amelia gets closer to Arlen, she notices that Arlen is just kind of humming softly under her breath. Just casual trait that apparently she tends to do quite often. Okay. Um, so as you guys do that, um, Otto and uh, Miri, you have seen two people into the house now. Um, but in the past several minutes, you haven't seen anyone else show up. I think uh, Otto would be like, you know what? I don't know why I'm messing around out here. Just go in. Okay. So uh, probably around the time that you two had uh, stopped your conversation, uh, Otto would walk in the door. Uh, Otto, do you want to give a brief physical description? Average, short slash average, burly looking man, uh, pale skin, blue eyes, short hair that's uh, light brown, rather stern expression, um, wearing uh, some rather dirty clothes, um, scale mail armor, and a cloak for warmth. Which would all be, you know, uh, tan, brownish colored, nothing fancy. Mm -hmm. And he would walk in and see the two half elves sitting there and say, "Which one of you sent this note?" Uh, it, Arlen just 
uh, immediately says, it wasn't me. I, I didn't do it. I'm assuming whoever sent it, uh, they left another note saying that um, they had to step out and they'll be back soon. So have a seat. I've been sitting here for a while, so hopefully we won't have to wait much longer. And uh, at that point, Arlen's kind of bored, so she just uh, stands up and starts like looking around looking behind tapestries and poking around, seeing if there's anything of interest in the room that could maybe give some more information about whoever sent that note. Okay, I'm assuming you, that your your character left a note like on a table or something? The other note, I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, the second mysterious note, yes. Uh, when I showed it to Amelia, I also put it on top of the table. Okay, so Otto would go and read the uh, note, at which point he would immediately begin to eat and drink <laughs> and sit. <laughs> okay, so uh, real quick, just to let you know, Otto, um, the bread is uh, it's a little st- stale, but it's filling, and uh, while the wine isn't exactly what you'd call a fine wine, it's uh, not bad. It tastes good enough. Yeah, I've been living on the street, so <laughs> stale bread That's and wine sounds pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Yeah. So so Arlen would take her time and casually observe um, Otto and see if, you know, he seemed okay after eating that. And ask him, you know, is it any good? It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so she would uh, timidly kind of walk over and pick up some of the uh, bread and have uh, some of the wine go like, man, if this is what you call delicious, <laughs> you need to uh, find better places to eat. Better than what I've been eating. That's all I know. <clears throat> and then, um, you know, Arlen would go back to just kind of like poking around, seeing if there was anything else of interest in the like any other items that can help explain or, or identify this person who left these notes, whose house this is. Would I see anything of interest? Uh, I'm sorry, where were you looking again? Um, like behind the tapestries. Didn't you say there's a bookshelf? Yeah, uh, no, no, just the tapestries. Uh, the tapestries and the rugs and uh, the one table with the chairs. Uh, behind the tapestries, you don't find anything really of note. Um, just the wall. <laughs> Darn. And there are no, like, other personal effects or any uh, decorations, just the incense burning? Correct. The incense burning, the tapestries, the food, the table. Um, everyone go ahead and uh, roll me a... Uh, D20 and add your constitution modifier, please. Does this include me? Since I'm uh, it will, it, go ahead and do it because I assume you will be coming in. So, 12. How do I do it again? Slash roll. Uh, just roll, uh, slash, or roll oh. 1D20. Oh, 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 uh, okay. Um,. So yeah, yeah, uh, you don't you don't see anything really of note. Just uh, the tapestries hanging from the wall, uh, very plain walls. This house uh, does seem to be a little in disrepair. Um, not the best taken care of, but other than that, nothing really remarkable. And that that goes for everyone. Yeah. Can I tell how long like the incense has been burning? Is there like a lot of ash? Uh. No, no, not a lot of ash. It probably hasn't been burning for more than, say, uh, 30 minutes or so. Okay, so then I would just assume, Arlen would just assume that she probably just missed the person. And then being bored, go sit back down with uh, Otto and Amelia. Um, so going back to Mweary, um, so you saw that the guy that was watching the house has now gone into the house as a third person. Uh, what do you do? How long are you waiting? What, what's your what's your move from here? 
I would give it another solid 10 minutes. Um, okay. Am I very confident that nobody else is watching this house, that there's nobody else who's been kind of loitering around? Yeah, no. The only one that you've noticed uh, was um, Otto. Okay. Um, then Weary will very cautiously make her way in. Okay. And so, as soon as she smells the smoke, immediately begins to cough, and her eyes start to water. Aw. Uh, so you guys, uh, after about a, a few minutes, um, you see a, a Kadal, which, like I said for Otto, um, not an unheard of sight, but definitely a rare sight, um, come in and begin to immediately cough. Uh... How does that work for a Kadal exactly? Um, you just note her kind of like she she'll she'll um um kind of wave her little her claws in front of her face and and um you definitely see her her throat puff up as she's coughing and she opens her beak a teeny tiny bit. Uh, Amelia looks over and asks, are, are, are you uh, all right? Um, kind of, kind of wiping, wiping her eyes and, and she's, she's opening the door and propping it open <laughs> and standing in the doorway. Um, uh, she, she nods at Amelia. Um, are there any windows in the house, in this room in particular? No, no, there are none. Oh. So Arlen would um first uh, put out the incense and then try to, like, just take her jacket and try to fan the air, like, the smoke out the door. Make it a little bit better to breathe. Okay. Um, the room loses a little bit of its dreamy feel. As you uh, usher much of the smoke out of the room, Otto would ask uh, is that- if, if uh, you know, could you did you send these uh, these tarot cards, tarot cards? Excuse me. I'm I'm guessing this is directed at me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, she'll shake her head and and dig out her own and show it to him. Ah. <sighs> Hate waiting. Arlen uh, just kind of shakes her head in agreement. It's like, man, there's so many other better things I could be doing with my time. <sighs> Is it just like a one room house? Are there any doors leading out into other areas of the house, or is this just the only space here? Um, there is one. Um. Like towards the back, uh, there is a uh, small a clove. It's not really a door, but it's more of a section of the room that contains a uh, like a mattress that's on the floor. Uh, but that is all. Yes, there you go, an alcove. <laughs> an a clove, yeah, no, an alcove uh, that contains a mattress. But that is all. It's a very small, simple. Shack, more or less. So, <laughs> so um, yes, an egg loaf. Um, Arlen kind of goes over and like kicks the mattress, and you know is nosing around, seeing if there's anything of interest. Um, and uh, while you're doing that, you hear the door open. Um, the the door was open. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh no, uh, the the door to the front of the house. You mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, because you were ushering the smoke out. Well, then you don't hear the door open, but <laughs> you do see someone, um, maybe not Arlen, who is uh, <laughs> kicking a mattress. Um, someone walk in through the door. Um, it is a, a middle-aged woman. Uh, as soon as Arlen starts to see somebody, she jumps away. Like, I, I, I wasn't looking. I wasn't doing anything. She uh, she wears a bandana over her head. She seems to be in her middle age. Uh, age is, you know, starting to show a few wrinkles on her face. Uh, but she has dark brown hair and uh, of medium, you know, height and a slight build. She comes through the door and uh, she sees you all there and she closes the door. And she says, thank you all for coming. 
So you sent the notes. Yes, my friends, I did send the notes because I need your help. I thank you for putting up with my unconventional method of contacting you. I have reason to remain hidden, you see. A vicious man would see great harm done to me if he knew I was reaching out for help. And this man has done something terrible to each of you as well. You know of who I speak. Otto looks around at the reactions of everyone else in the room and then says, How do you know what he's done to me? I have some small magical ability when it comes to reading horror cards. They led me to you. All of you. So Arlen's immediately kind of skeptical and then would want to do, can I do like a, a sense motive? Absolutely. Okay. How do I do that? What would I roll? Uh, it's actually a skill. Um, so you can go to your uh, your skills and then just click on it. It should add it for you. Uh, there we go. Fourteen. Okay. Um, she seems nervous and a little desperate, but she doesn't seem to be misleading you, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And she continues. She says, "A year ago, his thieves stole my horror deck from me. It's my." only way of making a living and is a heirloom that has been uh, an heirloom that's been passed down for dozens of generations uh, well when lamb's pickpocket stole it my son aaron tracked him down and and returned uh, my deck to me but but gadrian had him followed and soon after my son left my home gadrian's thugs murdered him they sent his head and his hands in a box as a warning to me. I, I, I sought help from the Kavosan guard, but, but while they were sympathetic, they, they said that it wasn't enough evidence to, to prove who did it, and they were too busy to pay much attention. I, I tried to pay bribes. I, I consulted my horror deck for advice, and eventually I was rewarded with two things. His location and you. I was shown that all of you have been wronged by him as well, and I was shown that together you can bring his downfall, though I, I, I am not sure how. But I need your help. I cannot hope to face this man. I am not a, a warrior or a fighter. And the guards, they, they, they sympathize, but they move so slowly. G Gadrian would certainly know if they're coming. And even if they arrested him, what guarantee would I have that he would be punished? This criminal has evaded the law for decades. But you, you know these frustrations as well as I do. You've felt the same pain I have. Um, Arlen would uh, kind of sit down, uh, and I'm assuming everybody else is sitting, so in the empty chair and be like, well, what do you want us to do? I know where he is, or at least the horror deck has pointed me in the right direction. And she sits down in a chair as well, and she says, if you would like, and she pulls out like a horror deck and starts shuffling it, and it's very clear that she is very skilled at this, is the way the cards just flow across her fingers. I can do a horror reading for you. It might help you in what is to come. Arlen kind of pulls out her card and go, well, aren't you kind of missing one? She nods and smiles and then holds out a hand kind of to each of you. Please, 
May I have them back? They are very dear to me. Otto would pass her a card and, and say, you have, you have my sympathies on the loss of your son, and I would love a tarot reading. And if you can, if you can point in the direction, I'll leave tonight. Thank you. And I would be more than happy to. Um, and then she looks to the other players. Do the rest of you give your cards, or? Yeah. Yeah, Mwiri will definitely hand over her card. She's, she's been kind of hanging back towards the door. Um, you can hear her wheezing in the background. Um, um, but she will, now that the room is sort of clearer, will draw closer to the table. Okay. Um, she takes the cards and shuffles them very uh, smoothly. And then uh, she uh, deals three cards to each of you. Uh, you're more than welcome to look at those cards if you'd like. Um, and then she she basically she she begins um, shuffling and dealing out the cards to you and as she deals it she'll start with uh, Arlen and she'll say um, the midwife the midwife is a card of oops hang on sorry <laughs> <laughs> I lost. I lost. My, okay. Uh, it was a mistake. The baby's says, mistake. The midwife is a conduit to creation, although she does not create on her own. But it is a strong card for making new things. The vision. This is a card of arcane knowledge. Such knowledge that it can take the form of madness or encrypted or cryptic words, but it means that you are surely touched by magic. And the keep. The keep is a card of. Um, she thinks for a second. It's a, a card of quiet strength, a, a sign of. Unmoving, standing firm against hardship. These cards mean something to you. And then she moves on to uh, Otto. I'm honestly not trying to steal your cards. I'm not sure how this works, but I accidentally. No, no uh, you you won't steal them just by clicking on it once. You can just see them. You know, it, it says I'm stealing one of her cards right now. It's a stealing dot dot dot. I can't. I don't know how to change it. Oh, ow. All right, yeah, uh, actually, tell you what, tell you what, let's do it this way, it'll be easier. Uh, instead of that, Otto, if you would, just place your cards, you can drag them to the table, one by one. Cool. So, uh, she says, the owl. Um, Otto looks at Muri. <laughs> Muri looks back. <laughs> It is a card that represents eternal wisdom of the natural order. It is a harsh realism. The idea of calling the weak of the herd and surviving at all costs. The bear. <laughs> the bear. The bear is pure strength. A people often mistake it for thinking that a bear can be tamed or trained. Many of them are sadly mistaken. And the beating. The beating is a card that signifies attacks from all sides, surrounded and assaulted, either physically or mentally. Um... And then uh, as, as she reads each of these cards, she uh, places them all back in the deck. And then, uh, Amelia, if you would please uh, put your three on the table. You just click on them and then drag them over. Or here, I'll do. I'll do it for you. Oh, I can't. Uh, can I? No, I can't. You shall have to do. Oh. 
stealing my own cards. You're on wearies, honey. That's why you can't. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and start because I can see them. Uh, she says, uh, first she says, the uprising. It represents being caught in the clutches of something more powerful than you. Uh, being overwhelmed by events far bigger than you. Um, yeah, there you go. The Mute Hag. The Mute Hag might be silent, but the eyes she holds let her see into the hearts of men. It invokes blood packs and poisonous secrets, the kind that turn brother against brother, son against father. This is a card that is usually an ill omen. And the foreign trader. The foreign trader is a card of spies and peddlers alike. Any who trade in information are subject to the card's influence. A bargain made under the card's auspice always concludes true, but the ramifications of the pact might be shocking. You may have made a deal in the past that had consequences you did not foresee. She puts those cards back into her deck. And, uh, Miri, if you would please as well. The Teamster. The Teamster is a driving external force. It keeps the subject going no matter what. You have suffered much and yet have not stopped. The wax words. Give me a second. The wax works is a place of happiness and physical entropy. The mind might be willing, but the flesh is frozen in this place of horror. Of I'm sorry, of helplessness and physical entropy. Very different. Um, the mind might be willing, but the flesh is frozen in this place of horror. It is I know. <laughs> it is also a card of torture and imprisonment. It can sometimes signify literal inability to move or a mental incapacity to move on. And the Brass Dwarf. The Brass Dwarf shows and uh, represents an invulnerability to the current danger. Although others might fall, you remain strong, a lone survivor of a great event. These cards have meaning for you. By the way, I just want to point out, these are all randomly drawn. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that doesn't mean much to most people. Well, actually, it would, because many of you know the backstories. <laughs> These are all randomly drawn cards. Just keep that in mind. Uh, Sib, if you could place the three cards on the deck, uh, as the table, as she uh, places them back into the deck. And she says, now it's time to read the board. I will place three rows of cards. The first row will deal with the past. And um, she shuffles the deck expertly, putting your cards back into it. And... Uh, uh, da, 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 to me. Thank you. She begins to place cards on the table. And you'll have to give me a second to uh, interpret them. With my expert horror skills. Uh, um, give me a sec here. All right. Um, she She looks over the cards. And uh, eventually settles on one, uh, the carnival. And she says, it's a card of illusions and false dreams. It means that there might be things going on that you aren't fully aware of. That pull the veil of truth or lies over your eyes. This is something that has happened in your past. And then she uh, puts three more cards down. 
And uh, she looks over them. As she taps the card in the middle, the dance. It is usually a rich and delicate framework, like the universe itself, requiring everyone within it to abide by its rules, lest the entire construct collapse. It advises staying in perfect step, or else suffering. It means that any number of wrong steps could bring you disaster, but that you have the ability to dance the perfect dance. And then she begins to lay the last three cards out. These symbolize what may be in your future. And uh, as she places it down, she sighs softly as she places the bear down and looks at Otto and says, um, you will suffer an ordeal sometime in your future that will require great strength. Be it physical, emotional, or mental, know that when you face this, pure, unbridled strength is your only key to success. And... Hmm? With that, she folds the cards back into her deck, and she says, Gadrian Lamb, the cards have shown me a location, an old fishery uh, in Old Corvosa. And she um, pulls out a map and uh, points to it. As I multitask, she uh, kind of like takes a, a quill pen and circles right here. This fishery, it has shown me this place. This is where he resides, I believe, or at the very least is the start of your path to finding him. I, I wish I could be more specific, but the horror cards are difficult to interpret. But going here is taking the first step towards retribution. And I wish you all the luck in the world. Well, <clears throat> Arlen says, you know, that was deep. <laughs> and kind of chuckles. And looks around at uh, the other three people. Well, I guess four people. Says, uh, any of you guys buying this stuff? Absolutely. Amelia, who has been entirely silent this entire time, glances up and you didn't think it possible, but she looks paler than she did before. Uh, Arlen looks over at Otto and is like, of course I didn't believe it. I'm, you, know, you can read the future off of a deck of cards? Seriously? Stranger things nah. have happened. So what did uh what did this guy do to you? Why are, why are you here? <clears throat> you gonna he, take the bait and He has taken someone dear to me and I I would head here tonight. Is anybody else interested? Can't let this opportunity slip by. Amelia nods quietly. I would caution over exuberance. Darling's like, I, I don't have much else to do. Why not? That's why I'm here. Um, Weary is going to turn back to the woman. Um, did she introduce herself to us by name? Oh. I, she would say... My apologies for my rudeness. I was just so caught up in what is before us. My name is Zellera 
Esmeralda. You say what is before us. Do you mean that truly? Should we rely on your help? I have helped all that I know how. I have never held a weapon in my life. I would only get in your way. I mean not by combat. I am... I'm not sure what you mean. You have told us this much. Should future information appear, would you tell us again? Of course. You are always welcome to come back, and I will help however I can. My door, consider it always open to you. Except now. When it's actually closed. Yes, I suppose it is. Amelia glances over at Arlen and says, "It's we're, we're already inside, so I suppose it doesn't really matter at the moment." Amelia, you look you look pale. Did the cards hold some special significance for you? Amelia uh, looks over at Otto and opens her mouth, then pauses and closes it, and looks down at the cards again. And says... There is always significance in vague fortunes, but... There was something rather... And then she pauses and shakes her head and says, It is nothing for you to worry about. Seems we all have our own demons to battle. Well, Arlen just says, Well, you know, since you guys are so seem uh, unwilling to uh, reveal why you're here, you know, this guy, he, he murdered my brother, took the only family that I have. So, yeah, I'll take whatever chance I can to get back at him. So what are we going to do? How are we going to get this guy? Should we just storm over to the wharf or dock or wherever this place is? I'm no tactician, but my plan was to walk up and bash the door in and bash the heads of anyone who gets in my way. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm open to ideas, though. <laughs> I would like to roll knowledge local. To uh, absolutely. Um, sure. Actually, have everyone. Everyone can go ahead and roll a knowledge local. Um, to, I'm assuming to see if you've heard anything about this uh, fishery. Yeah, to see if I know anything about the area or um, his activity okay. in there. Um. <laughs> Nope. Well, what for me? Uh, Miri, uh, Miri and, um... Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, Miri hasn't rolled yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, okay. Uh, Amelia, you don't... This place doesn't sound familiar to you, though that's not un- unusual. There's there's dozens and dozens of docks. Um, much of Corvos, Corvosan trade is done through ships. Um, same for you, uh, Miri. However, um... Arlen and Otto, you, um, in whatever way, shape, or form you've heard of, perhaps not this specific doc, um, or, no, actually, okay, yeah, 19 is actually a good role. So, both of you, in one way or another, have heard, um, this fishery produces, um, a type of food uh, it's a very nasty food. In fact, uh, Otto, it might be because you've you've had this uh, quite a few times yourself. They're called dock dumplings, and they're made from leftover parts of um, fish. Uh, they're a very cheap food that poor people eat on a uh, uh, on occasion when when they need to. This um, this fishery is reported to make them and produce them. Um, Arlen. You wouldn't know that, but you would know that this particular fishery, you remember seeing something about um, the previous owner of this fishery having uh, 
passed away. Meaning that this fishery, and you you would know that general um, the general rules of the city is that if someone passes away and they own property and there is no heir to give the property to, the the uh, estate is held in uh, in escrow uh, for two a period of two years, and during that period of two years, it's kind of just lays dormant. So it's conceivable that someone could be using this and no one would ever know, not for at least two years. Figures a slime bag like uh, Gadrian would be hanging out at some place like this, taking advantage of whatever he can. Um, but I'm pretty sure he wouldn't be alone. So Otto, at least I don't think the uh, best idea would be to to run straight in. I think we kind of need to take a minute and scope the place out. As long as as long as you agree to help me, I'll I'll follow direction. As long as we can stop this guy. Uh, oh, I'm I'm completely with you. I'm saying we can go now. Just uh, please don't run straight in right away. I wouldn't want to have to uh, kill him and then pull your dead body out. So let's be a little cautious about this. Well, on that note, um, so Otto, you've been living on the streets. What, uh, what are you good at? What would you say your particular skills are? I used to be a blacksmith, but it all kind of fell apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, entirely unrelated to Cajun Lamb, actually. But uh, Aside from that, I, I, I attend services at the uh, Church of Gorham. I used to have a family. I mostly keep to myself. Smithing is really my it's my profession, what can I say? So that's great. But anything in particular for this specific excursion? Oh, you mean in terms of dealing with whatever we're gonna find in this uh, Yeah. Well, it's difficult to explain, but I can hold my own in the fight. <clears throat> that hardly seems like something difficult to explain. It just means you can hold your own in a fight. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> so it does. <clears throat> what about you, Amelia? I mean, I'm a fairly good shot with a crossbow. I um uh, I have my ways I suppose. All right. Well, aren't we a bunch of bashful folk? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody get it? You know, like sneaking around, talking to people. I suppose this will be a learning experience for all of us. All right, why not? Let's just charge in. When, you know, of course, we're in. Well, where he gets back. I'm, I'm right here. That's me. Yeah. Zellera does say, who's been very quiet this entire time, she says, Have faith. The horror cards found you because you have the ability to find him and end him. Is this the retribution you seek? My son deserves justice. Is this the justice you seek? His death? He has escaped the law for decades. I have no faith in them anymore. So Arlen's a little suspicious about um, the way she's evading the questions and uh, like to a uh, sense motive? Absolutely. Again, mm-hmm. and anybody else more than welcome that might have like a higher role. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I will assist. <clears throat> yeah, uh, auto trusts her because she lost her son. End of story. <laughs> All right. Um. 
You you can't really. Uh, well, let's wait here. Oh boy. <laughs> oh. Oh, and you've got such a great sense motive bonus. <laughs> Uh, natural one. Um, oh yeah, again, I can't remember. So, uh, uh, Arlen rolled a 10, Amelia 5, and Miri rolled a natural one. Um, Miri, she is the most honest person you've ever, no. Um, I actually don't like to do sense motive that way. To me, sense motive wouldn't tell you, like, you can't just look at someone and be like, ah, they're lying about this and truthful about that. I, I think more sense motive is more of a general, um... They don't give you any indications that they're being untruthful. They definitely are seeming less nervous now than when they first met you. That's for sure. More at ease. Um, and all you sense from her in this case is is earnestness. So I would ask her, why are you being so evasive? Why are you not uh, answering worries, questions about is this the justice you seek? I don't believe we introduced ourselves. If she knew where we live, I'm going to trust that she knows who we are. I know, but Arlen doesn't know. Oh. oh. Uh. Yeah, and I didn't really give a character description either. I'm, I'm assuming it was Murray, so I'm like, why are you listening to the big bird? Or why aren't you answering the bird's questions? I'm sorry. The... It is... A good person shouldn't wish for a man's death, but I do. Her question makes me feel uncomfortable. Fair enough. Fair enough. But, uh, you know, I don't think there's any shame in wanting a bad man out of the world. All people, they get what they got coming to them, what they put out. What they put out comes back sometimes in very uh, violent ways. She nods. Mm, Arlen, I don't know if this will matter, but since you asked, I'm pretty good at not sneaking, but disguises, I suppose you could say. (laughs) I have a way of being forgotten. Though I'm not sure how that's going to help us right now. <clears throat> well, if you're good at forgot, forget. Uh, if people forget who you are quickly, then that means maybe you can go and scope things out, and they won't remember you if you get caught, and you can slip away. They won't remember you later. Well, yeah. All right, well, uh, Arlen just kind of stands up and is like, what are we waiting for? We ready to go? Anybody need to, well, take a potty break? Um, excuse me, Zellera, but Don't make fun of me. would I be able to take another <laughs> loaf of, or another bit of bread for the road? Of course, uh, of course. I'm, I'm glad child, that you like child, it. leave the woman alone. <laughs> um, Larry is going to reach... She's she's wearing... Um, I guess real quick I'll slip in like a character thing. Because y'all don't really know what she looks like. Um, she stands a little bit shorter than the average human. Maybe six foot... Or, uh, or five foot six. Um... She's she's very she's covered in dark brown feathers. Would you stop laughing at me? I'm sorry. <laughs> Slightly shorter than the average human at six foot five. <laughs> I'm gonna push you off the bed. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> or I will eat another cupcake slowly in oh, front of you. <laughs> don't children, don't. children. <laughs> that is a very interesting uh, description of yourself. <laughs> so she's eating cupcakes. <laughs> wow. Where'd you get cupcakes? I want one. Oh Otto just starts like drooling. <laughs> um. So, anyways, thanks. <laughs> the words stop Just laughing at me. Myself from the room. Good. Damn. Get out. Um. So she's covered in dark brown feathers with kind of goldish yellowish flecks. Um. Her eyes are totally black. Like, they don't have any iris, no nothing. 
Um, her face is sort of angular, um, and it ends in a pointed beak and kind of a beard-like ruff of feathers. Um, she does not open her beak when she speaks. Instead, her throat puffs up. Um, she has sort of scaly digits ending in filed claws, because we're not savages here. Um, and she's wearing a, a very heavy poncho, and it's sort of a walnut brown color. Um, it, it strikes you as, as having several layers to it. And then on her back, she's got sort of a strange wooden box with a roof on it. Um, it's a, it's like a it's like a it's it looks like a tiny house, and she's wearing it on her back with straps. It's got like it's got, it looks like it could be set down and it would be make a nice cabinet. Well, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, she, she reaches into her, her voluminous poncho-like garb and produces, um, a stack of five or six fist-sized brown cookies. Um, they're covered in a green, they look like sprinkles. They're like green, greenish sprinkles. And she hands them to Otto. Don't believe we got your name. Mary. Well, are you are you sure you want to give these away? They look rather special. They are food. You, I, I, I make food consistently for myself. Thanks. I, I really appreciate it. You are welcome. Do you not eat regularly? I eat as much as enough, as often as I can afford. Which these days isn't much. Weary kind of huffs um, at this. She seems somewhat offended on your behalf. Um, where do you live? Nowhere. I had thought as much. When this is done, you will come with me, yes? Uh, okay. I have a roof and a kitchen. Okay. That... I don't know what to say. Say thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. And, uh, I don't know, if we make it through this, uh, I have a workshop. You can always come and build some stuff, use my tools. Do you have a forge? No, but I'm sure I could get access to one. Well, I'm sure they have one somewhere around in the university. This this turns out to be a more than one night campaign, which I imagine it will. Uh, I'll, I'll try to put myself to use as best as I can. <clears throat> Little do the players know, this is only a one night campaign. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> yes. longest night of your lives. No, uh, sorry, I'm done. Way to break the immersion. Go to work in the morning. Gosh. <laughs> All right, so anybody need to do anything before we start this long walk across town? And I hope somebody else leads because, you know, I don't have the best directions. It took me four hours to go, like, I don't know, 300 yards? Yeah, I mean, aside from the, the usual places I've, I've gone in my life, I don't know a whole bunch of the city as either so i mean according to the map it's all of like 50 feet but i think the scale is off uh the scale's a bit off that's actually uh uh there's a, like a little key at the bottom it's actually several it's about two thousand feet away <laughs> like so, 10 blocks 
10 blocks. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so... I'm ready to go whenever anybody else is. Just don't ask me to lead. So about this time would be the sun has set. Um, night has fully come. You can see just the last rays of the sunlight over the western horizon. But for all intents and purposes, it is nighttime. Um, and uh, the uh, the city is large enough in this area, even though it's mostly a residential area. There's still um, some light spilling into the streets from some taverns around. And you hear uh, some, some noise. But it's, it's getting quiet as people are starting to bed down for the evening or, or more like go home and have dinner mm-hmm. um spells being cast in the city would this be like an issue you know uh, no no as long as it's not um hurting anyone magic is is especially since this is the city of the grand academy the world renowned magic uh college uh, magic is very common in this town Okay, and the second question doesn't matter. But if we're going to walk around the city in the dark, I would I would uh, cast light on my shield so that it acts as like a lantern. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Amelia, you had a, uh, a plus sign. By the way, for everyone who's watching at home or listening to the podcast, uh, a way we have of uh, notifying the inattentive GM that they have something they'd like to say without immediately interrupting someone else is to put a plus sign in the chat, like our good friend Amelia has done. Because I am a good player. <laughs> um, uh, before we leave um, the house, uh, Amelia will kind of uh, take what uh, Zalara. Uh, Zellera. Zellera. Um, she would take her aside and ask, "How? How did you get the Haro card into my home?" She um, kind of looks down and she says, I have a small gift when it comes to the magical arts. Is Roll it... me a sense motive check, please. I can do that. I, and by the way, I very commonly will not tell you. That's more of a you tell me thing. But once in a while, she's not lying per se, but you're getting the impression she. she oh, by the way, Amelia rolled an eighteen. Um, you're getting the impression that um, she's not being completely forthcoming either. Mm-hmm. Noticing a trend of her being really good at avoiding questions, but that that's player me. Um, Amelia frowns at her slightly and says, "If if tonight goes poorly, and then she pauses and says, would you deliver a letter to my home for me?" She hesitates, and she says, Give me the letter, and I will ensure they see it. Thank you. And she will um, hurry over to the table um, and uh, write out a letter um, for her mother, which I suppose I can write out for you later. <laughs> Sure, sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, basically just like letting her know that uh, she's found a lead and that she will follow through with it and that hopefully if, she, if there's any luck, um, <laughs> she will come out to the other end alive. Okay, absolutely. Uh, and with that, do you guys uh, head out? All right, so you guys uh, begin your journey going down the roads. You'll connect to one of the major routes down here, University Way. You'll go uh, 
right past the large building that used to be a museum. Uh, now looks like a giant um, marketplace of some kind. Straight down to uh, you're gonna connect to the uh, the Jaeger Circle over here, and uh, you're gonna take a, a strong left onto uh, what the hell is that called? Manashur Boulevard. Um, okay, and you're gonna take, a, you're gonna take a left at the Starbucks on the end of the road. Uh, you missed that left. That's fine. Just let me reroute you down Second Street. No, um, oh God. Uh, you, uh, you, you cross the bridge, the the only stone bridge in the old Corvosa. So all of you know that uh, old Corvosa is where the town first uh, was settled. Um, it is the oldest part of the town, and it is inevitably one of the oldest. Uh, I mean, one of the poorest. Yeah. <laughs> One of the poorest sections of town, uh, especially at the very front of Old Corvosa. Uh, these are the poorest areas of all of Corvosa. So this dock that you're headed to is 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 definitely in the poor side of town. Uh, old Corvosa is uh, connected by many, many wooden bridges um, and one main stone bridge, which you make your way across and then take a, a right down Wave Street. Until you come right up to where the old fishery is. And uh, I'm going to move you guys over. So, so before we get too close, I tell Otto, uh, you seem like, you know, a guy who can deal a lot of damage. You'll probably be the guy up front. So let me know before we go in. I got something for you. Okay. <laughs> if I can. And, uh, please, please, dear players, tell me what you see. And please tell me it's not the inside of this place. No, it's we a big Adrian Lamb. Black. Yeah, big yes, and large. All his secrets right there. Um, good. I just wanted to make sure the reveal areas are working. You can see the outside, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you said you wanted to scope the place out a bit. So let me tell you a little bit about what you see when you come up upon this place. Um, it is a creaking, decrepit looking building. Um, but it does look solid. Um, it looks like it's a few years away from falling apart, so it's not quite to that bad condition, but it certainly is, um, not well maintained. Um, this, um, uh, the outer windows are all completely boarded up, so it's impossible to, uh, look inside. However, you can see a few things wandering around. Excuse me. You see that there is light coming from the inside. You can kind of hear noise, though, at this distance. It's hard to tell what's going on. You just hear movement inside. Um, voices once in a while, but indistinct. Um, this looks like some sort of uh, double doors into a loading or docking bay area. Mm -hmm. This looks like the main doors into the... Uh, the old fishery and uh on the back alley there's a, a a long gangplank that goes around the back of it it's very slippery covered in uh, moss uh it, it's very clear that the waves of the river um will often rub uh, wash over this so it's very slippery very wet and this is what you see uh with one exception as you guys get close um Towards the back of the building, right around where that uh, old dock is, mm -hmm. you see, um, it's hard to see in the shadows, but it looks like a large, furry rodent of unusual size. <laughs> on the, on the right-hand side, sorry? Yes, correct. Kill it! No, I'm kidding. Uh, um... It is, uh, it is, it is just sitting, like, on its paws. Um, does anyone have handle animal or knowledge nature or anything of that kind? I got handle animal. And anyone I have, have knowledge nature? I can roll any skill on drink or Absolutely. use any skill on drink. Go ahead and both of you make rolls for me, please. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, Arlen, you've seen this in a textbook somewhere before. It looks like a dire rat, but with two very notable exceptions. Exception number one, 
Dire rats are usually the size of small dogs. This looks like it'd probably come up to your waist if it was standing on all fours. So quite a bit larger than most dire rats. And the second notable exception is most dire rats um, are very mangy. Their fur is uh, matted and dirty and filthy. Their claws are long and unkept, and they are most commonly riddled with diseases. This dire rat seems very well groomed. The coat is almost... Uh, it's very healthy and it's almost shiny. Its claws are um, not trimmed, but they're they're cleaned and taken care of. And uh, you notice that there is a um, like a blanket of sorts on his back. Almost looks like a, a saddle of some kind. So Arlen kind of stops and looks at it and kind of cocks her head to the side and goes, Kitty, is that you, Kitty? The, uh, the rat, like, its head picks up and it stares at you. And, uh, it then yawns and puts its head back down on its paws. Do you have a giant rat named Kitty? No, of course not. But, you know, it could have been Kitty. I just had to check. <sighs> so nosy. Okay. And, uh... <laughs> As you say that, you begin to hear a small, high-pitched voice coming. Um, so all of you, like at this time, because, you know, in order to see this, you would have had to, uh, well, your your tokens would be more towards that, that side if you guys would like to. Oh, hang on. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would help if they're on the right uh, layer, GM. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The world is moving. <laughs> the world is moving. Are you um, are you uh, channeling Jory Lawrence? Yeah, a little bit. All right. Uh, hang on. Let me move these guys to the token tabs and give you control of them uh, real fast. Do, 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 do. Controlled by you. Controlled by you. I put the tokens there and then just kind of forgot that part. Yeah, I do that all the time. And last but not least, you you should be able to control your tokens now. So I guess we're over here if we're looking at the, yeah. the giant mm-hmm. kitty rat. The giant kitty rat, yes. Um, you begin to hear a small, squeaky, high-pitched voice coming uh, kind of towards you from under this um, dock. And then it goes... Filthy long shanks, making children work at night. Filthy long shanks, no give treats this night, Toby. No give treats this night, Toby. And uh, you see, coming out, b- back feet first, crawling out from the small little space between the ground and the dock, a small goblin. So the first thing that Arlen does is because she's standing next to Otto she casts mage armor on Otto and then pulls out her crossbow I thought that uh, mage armor required that the wearer not be wearing any armor correct oh does it oh i didn't yeah. know that yeah. it didn't say that yeah unfortunately it um um yeah it, it acts as armor so it cannot be cast upon someone who has armor or more specifically it can but it replaces said armor right oh it basically be exactly the same as the scale i'm wearing i think mm-hmm. to okay that. well so it doesn't stack oops i appreciate that my thought. bad Um, and, uh, at at that, you, uh, so what exactly, so, okay, first things first, because your character would know this, your character made the device, it would know, uh, it, she would know that, um, it wouldn't really be more effective than what he's wearing. Do you still want to cast it? No, no, that's fine. All right. So you pull out your crossbow. What does everyone else do? Right now, it's got its back towards you. It's crawling out feet first. I would draw my weapon, but just wait for anyone else to, you know, do stuff. Uh, at the sound... Oh, mm-hmm. Go ahead. 
Oh, I just said be ready, that's all. Okay. Uh, at the sound of your drawing weapon and the, and the crossbow, uh, the little goblin stops, still feet towards you, and goes, Oh. Oh. L- long shanks? Yeah. Yeah. And it turns around and sees you, and it goes, Oh. Uh, nice long shanks. No hurt, Flack. Flack not dangerous. Flack, um, Flack drops something. Flack, look for something. That's it. <laughs> um, what are you looking for? Ar- Arlen says, and and what are you doing here? Ah, uh, looking for doing here. Flack, um, looking for uh, a lie. Flack, not good at lying. Ah. Uh, Promise not hurt, Flack? Um, Amelia steps forward. Um, how close are we to him? Um, so he is, I don't have a token for him. He's right about here. So you're about, so Otto's about 10 feet away. Oh, uh, would we be all be clustered together? Yeah. If you want to. You, you can move your token to be where you'd want to be. And uh, just so everyone knows, each square is like five feet. Um, all right. Um, yeah, uh, Amelia would uh, walk up to him um, and reach out. Would he allow her to touch him? Uh, he would uh, shrink back a little bit and go, nice long shanks, no hurt long shanks. But he wouldn't stop you from touching him. And you notice when you get closer, he is wearing uh, fairly normal leather breeches and a, a kind of a for looks like a children's shirt, but on him it's very big because uh, this goblin stands two feet tall on his tallest day, um, and he has a fairly large uh, satchel slung over his shoulder that looks like it's full. Amelia and, uh, mm-hmm. uh, looks from him to the satchel and asks, What's in it? Uh, 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 treats! Uh, long shanks like treats! And he opens it, and inside are actually decently good smelling sweet cakes. They're rather ugly, as in they weren't made. Um, shaped well but they smell good and uh he almost says in a rush he goes longshanks knows the little children little longshanks i would go say flack knows little longshanks work in here work long hours work hard hours flack doesn't like that doesn't like them sad so flack sneak in sometimes give sweet cakes they like flack flack like them don't hurt flack tell me where the children are or i'll crush your head and uh, as you say that, the um, the rat actually stands up and um, actually moves in between, not to you, but in between you and the goblin, as if it understood what you said. And Flax says, Oh no, ah, I tell you, where? Working, working inside. Ah, filthy long shanks have them working when they should be sleeping. Couldn't give treats. So how... Uh, Arlen asks, how is it that you normally get in? You said you sneaked in. How do you get in? Little hole. Down there. Very small. Must wiggle through. Too big for long shanks. Too small for long shanks. Who's long shanks? All of us. I think he means the big people. He nods vigorously. Ah. Are these doors locked, Goblin? The one, that had a point towards the the wooden ones, like right in front of us here, right? That's those are doors. Uh, like the main doors? Uh, give me one second while I figure out that. Um... By the way, how loud are we being? Um, well, compared to the fact that there's noise coming from the inside, uh, not very loud. Even Flack is, is, you know, his voice isn't carrying very far. Okay. 
Um, so taking a look at those doors, um, you you see that they are pretty um, pretty old, but also pretty thick. And as you look at the doors, where you guys are, like the the smell of fish is just thick in the air. Um, it's just everywhere. Um, there is a drooping signpost hanging above it. The sign uh, it once displayed is long gone, but the signpost is still there, just uh, leaving a, a short length of rusted chain. Um, and Flack would nod, and he'd say, Locked! Lock good tight! Must find hole! Must also sneak in! Or big long shanks hurt Flack! How about you sneak in and open those doors for us? <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Longshank, maybe one time. Longshank, great warrior in tribe, but, but, Longshank, I mean, sorry, Flack, Flack, great warrior in tribe, but Flack get kicked out. Flack, coward. Don't like be coward, but is what is. Coward can't do. Sorry. Um, Amelia kneels down in front of him and says, how many are in there? Ha uh, ha. Uh. He like takes his hands out and like, like starts like pushing on his fingers like he's counting, gets to like two and goes, uh, more than this, many, uh, uh, more than one, less than lots, many, many little long shanks though. Um, is this is this building like multi-storied? Are there any windows above ground level? All the windows, yeah, all the windows are boarded up. Um, it is only one level where you are. However, you can tell that where this dock starts, there is a drop off of about thirteen feet. So, like this area right here from mm -hmm. here to the water, is like a small cliff of about 13 feet, which means that while you can't see anything from where you are, there is definitely room for there to be, say, another level underneath, possibly. So... How do we get in? Well, that pretty much wraps up this episode. Um, next week, next Sunday, or perhaps a little sooner, uh, we will continue their journey into Gadrian's fishery, and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, as always, we want to thank you guys so much. Whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it as the podcast, it means the world to us. So by all means, please let us know what you think. Give us feedback, uh, positive or constructive. Either way, we like it all, we appreciate it all, and we listen to it all. I would like to thank Stephen O'Brien, who wrote the theme music for our opening and closing. A uh, very nice person. Info on that is uh, in the description below this video or on the podcast. And until next time, everyone, have a good week.